Hi everyone, my name is Kim Elsenbrook and I work with the Land Conservancy of McHenry County. We're a nonprofit land trust organization that specializes in preserving natural and farmlands for both private and public use. Today we're going to go over six trees that are commonly found in McHenry County using winter tree ID techniques. All of the trees that we filmed in this video today can be found at Henning Conservation Area, a TLC property that's located in Woodstock. Bark is a main identifying character that you're going to use to look at trees in the winter. Something you want to look at at first is how thick or thin is the bark? Does the bark have ridges? Do the ridges make a pattern? What color is the bark? And does the inner and outer bark have a different color? Also note that as a tree gets older, the bark will look a little bit different as it ages. If it's not out of reach, you'll want to grab a twig so you can look at some of the identifying characters on it to help you see what species you're looking at. Different things that you want to pay attention are thorns, the color, if it has hairs on it or not, and then you're going to start looking at the bud arrangement or where the leaves will grow in the spring. Another really important winter ID character are the buds. These are going to be the leaves in the spring. You want to pay attention to the size, the number, the color, the shape, and whether or not they're growing opposite one another or alternatingly up the twig. Inside of the twig, you can find the pith, which might be continuous or chambered. The continuous piths may be variant in color, and the chambered pith, you'll notice spaces within the stem. You can see the pith by breaking the twig in half or shaving off towards the center of the twig. Here is a list of the six species that we're going to review in the field and give you identifying characters for winter tree ID. All right, here we have silver maple. And when you're approaching the tree, generally you can observe the bark's silvery appearance. And it also kind of flakes off a little bit like the shag bark but to a lesser degree. So you can kind of see some pieces falling off here and there, flaking off, but just a little bit less than the shag bark. Silvery appearance, slightly shaggy bark, gives you the silver maple. The buds are oppositely growing up the twigs and they are very brightly red in color. So they're pretty obvious, especially across the silver or gray landscape of winter. All right, here with mulberry, uh, the bark, when you're looking at it from far away, has some orange color to it. And so that's one of the first things you can look for when you're approaching the tree. The twigs have buds that are alternating up the stem, and the color of the buds is also orange. 
Another characteristic of the mulberry tree are witch's brooms, which you can see in the branch pattern above here. They're kind of clustered together and take on the appearance of a witch's broom. Hey there, here with a box elder, uh, a tree that you may not want to keep on your property if you are managing for oaks. Uh, the bark is kind of nondescript, it's not very distinct, but something that is distinct about the plant is the new growth of these twigs, which have a purplish, reddish uh, color with a waxy overlay that you can kind of brush off with your fingers. The buds are arranged oppositely along the twigs and all the way up the stem. And they're red colored once you remove the waxy layer. And we'll give you the, a zoomed in version after this. Here with a couple of oak trees are uh, some differences from far away that you can check out when you're approaching a tree is the color of the bark. Uh, this here is a white oak and you can see that the bark is a little more lightly colored when comparing it to this red oak on this side. The bark is a little bit darker. You can see some like racer lines in the tree, almost looking like ski slopes. Um, so that's just a general color difference between two different types of oak trees, the white family and the black family, which also includes red oaks. This oak is uh, also white, you can tell, because it has lobed leaves instead of pointed. And they're just still hanging on from last season. All oak trees in general have alternating buds and they're also in a cluster formation. So we'll give you a more zoomed in version of that shortly. All right, here was Shagbark Hickory. And as you approach this tree, it's pretty massive. And it also has very distinct bark. It's essentially shaggy bark. As you can see here, these giant plates look like they're peeling off of the tree. This is the most defining character of the Shagbark Hickory. Buds grow alternately up the twig and they also have really giant buds, which we'll zoom into in a second here.
here with Hackberry and one of the most defining characters that you'll notice about this tree is the crazy looking bark. Um, from far away it might just look kind of gray and lumpy but we'll get you a closer up shot where you can see a layered bark that kind of looks corky and almost 3D printed. Um, the twigs of the stem have buds that are alternate up the stem. They're very small and pointy. And another defining character of this plant is the pith, which is chambered. Few uh, species have chambered pits, but all of these characters combined together will point you to the hackberry tree. So here's a little bit of a closer shot up of the bark. As you can see, there's kind of a flat gray bark on the main part of the trunk which has layers of bark built on top of it. They're kind of quirky in feeling and you can see each individual layer that is built on top of each other, kind of like a layer cake. And on, on this angle, you could see the individual lines of bark that are stacked up on top of one another. 